Hello, welcome back to Funtime Crafts 24-7. This is a let's make video and um, this is what we get to make today. We are playing with the Anna Griffin Antique Armoire Die Set and Craft Kit. Um, most of the stuff that uh, is that we're using today is out of the actual uh, Class 8 Craft Kit from Create 9. And um, the, the papers that we're using, yeah, actually all the... All the things we're using in the one we're creating today is out of that. However, you don't have to have that in order to uh, make a beautiful armoire. Uh, this was made out of uh, papers uh, from my stash and just little embellishment items that, that I had. Um, I added uh, some fun little jewelry box feet, a little jewelry box uh, lock uh, to the front of the doors, um, the little dresses. I added, ad-libbed a bamboo uh, skewer uh, for a closet pole and then added a beautiful uh, book corner embellishment to the top of the hutch and thought, um, what a fun little um, gift that this would make to somebody. Uh, you could actually put a pocket on the back and pop a little note card in there, uh, put a gift card in it. Um, you don't even have to use the cabinet as an armoire. You, you could make it all kinds of other things. Um, turn it into a little crafty cabinet or um, you could put make it a golf cabinet uh, put little golf balls and tees in there with a the gift card uh, you can turn it into a bank <laughs> I haven't done that yet but I think it would be so fun that if it was like you it was black and you black and gold and you opened it up and like there were shelves of little chocolate nuggets that look like little gold bars in there I think that would be hilarious like so cute um, but yeah, just all kinds of stuff. Um, you could put magnetic sheets, sheet on the back of the doors, um, and put dies or needles. You could turn it into a sewing hutch, um, put needles and thimbles on the shelf and like threads, like fun little Guterman threads in there. Um, dies, stickles, you could do all kinds of stuff with these little armoires. They're just so, so fun. And, uh, I think they turn out so cute. So there's that one. Now this one here uses uh, all the pieces out of the kit it uses the traditional front that has the integrated feet on it and this is the paper out of the kit the paper out of the kit is really sink and nice because it's like 300 gsm uh so it um it is really sturdy and really nice the thing that i did do with mine is i didn't like the open look of the front of the doors because these actually cut out so i taped the pieces on the back um, back into the die and then created a little um, panel to hide that on the back and um, I, I like the cleaner look of that much much better um, you could actually instead do a couple of layers you don't have to tape the dies back in the die cuts back in you could leave these out and then emboss a piece of um, vellum and glue a panel on the back and then glue um, another a door frame with the tab cut off on the back of that so you had like frosted glass and if it was embossed it would give it that embossed design and help to highlight uh, the funness of that door and um, I thought that would be a really fun way to do that as well so I went ahead and ad-libbed a little my own little lock using the little handles um, and this is actually a, a corner uh, cut and emboss folder uh, one of Anna Griffin's corner cut and emboss folders um, that I just trimmed off to help mimic um a latch and then these are just two of the handles glued together as a tab and then these are stacked um three handles stacked to give it the illusion of a um a lock but i was actually going to show you how to make a little a locking mechanism uh with the hanger die and then the handles and um, thought this just turned out super, super fun. The other thing is, is um, I layered the front panel on uh, with chipboard. Um, if you look, this this is actually two layers. One is ch uh, white chipboard with the gold layer uh, glued to the front of it. And then um, I did that so the legs were really nice and sturdy. However, if you feel like that whatever you're putting inside the cabinet is a little heavier um, than the feet for, are able to hold, like they still feel like they're going to collapse, what you can actually do is you can add a gusset uh, to the bottom uh, just behind the legs there. This is a one-inch 
by one and seven eighths inch um, that I scored on the one inch side every quarter inch and then folded it up to be that little, you fold it up like a, a rosette. Um, so Mountain Valley, Mountain Valley. Um, and then it creates a little gusset and I just glued that in between the legs. So the legs actually have a propensity to go in, like to curve in. So this will help to hold the legs out and you can actually glue the tab to the back of the legs either way. And that'll actually help hold the legs. So from going out or in, but they primarily actually want to go in. So this helps them to be stabilized as well. So you can put heavier items in the box without worrying too much that the legs are going to collapse. So that's another, and I was going to show you how to do that as well. Um, but yeah, so I think these just come out so darling. Isn't that just a hoot? And then uh, the other thing I was going to show you was um, how to fold up the dresses. They're quite easy um, to do once you get the hang of it. And um, it's super fun. They're just, aren't they just the cutest thing? Looks like a realistic wardrobe, doesn't it? So adorable. But yeah, so those are the two examples there. And uh, we ought to get started because this is going to be a long video. Um, they're, they're really simple to put together, but there's a lot of parts. Uh, there's a lot of pieces to do. So our goal is to get something um, that looks like this sweet little dress here. This is what the back looks like. This is what the bottom looks like. So on the bottom of these dresses, there's actually a box pleat there. Um, to help give the illusion of a realistic dress. And so there's also a, a waistband that gets folded uh, with the design of the dress and to make it that much more dimensional. And so this is what we're going to achieve uh, today are, is this similar look here. And all the dresses fold in the same fashion. So I was going to actually start with that first, um, is the uh, fold of the dress. Oh, wait. Maybe you want to see what the dyes look like. <laughs> so this is it. This is your inspirations here. There's more on the back. Uh, you open up the inside and it gives you um, what you what you should cut for all the pieces, how to put it together, and then how to use the dyes on uh, through your empress, empress machine. It's also saying that you need the large empress plate set in order to use the dyes because the dyes are fairly uh, big. Uh, the base uh, die that you have to cut two of measures approximately oh seven and an eighth by roughly uh, ten and three quarters. Um, so that's a that's a very so you have to use a large plate system um, for that large die. So there, this is what the die set looks like. So you get your base die, you get your layering die for the door, you get a shelf die. These are your handles. You get several hanger dies, which is really nice. And then you get some uh, decorative panel dies as well. Um, your, it's a two-piece uh, set. So here's your second sheet. Um, this is the front and the back. Uh, this is how you get the legs. Um, your door die and then another layering die. And this one is for the doors. And there is actually proper orientation uh, for this die because the top and or the bottom is larger than the other. Um, there's also this die here is actually for the top of the armoire. Uh, I didn't use it, but you can actually layer that on the top of the armoire. And then this is for the side of the armoire. And uh, yeah, so lots of beautiful uh, pieces to use and create something really special. So there's no dies uh, for the dress. Uh, the dress uh, came in the kit. So if you have the kit, and I don't know if she's going to sell these separately or not, um, but uh, for those of you that buy, buy the kit, it comes with uh, several different embellishments. It comes with the 300 GSM cardstock um, and all kinds of stuff to uh, use to make the armor. So I'm going to start with this one. If you use uh, or start, I'm going to do this one. Um, if you do the pink or there's a pale blue uh, there's this pale blue dress. These two are the easiest by far to actually fold up. And I would suggest doing these first. And it's because you can actually see the score lines. These other patterns, um, the pattern actually inhibits you from seeing where the actual score line is. So that's why I'm suggesting you do this one first. Um, and so what I do to start out with is I actually fold the waistband first. I do the bottom one, which gets folded towards me. And then I do the top one, uh, which 
gets folded away. So you're going to start this way like that. And then you're going to go away from you and you're going to end up with something like this and just give it a press. You don't have to like crease the bejesus out of it. We're not trying to make this flat. We're trying to just get dimension in this. And so this is what it's actually going to fold up like, like that. So you want to then go ahead and unfold that. And the reason you're doing that is because you have six score lines that go vertical and the, the first one and the last one are only straight until the waistband and then they flare out like so. And so I do fold those still, but the waistband gives you the place to stop and then to start flaring out. So what I like to do is I like to fold the top of the dress. See, and it's already trying. I like to fold the top of the dress to the waistband. So I just give that a little pinch like that. I'm not trying to fold it flat. And then from the waistband, I know I'm going to flare out. So I start folding the paper in that direction, but I'm not folding it all the way flat. I'm just going to do a little like that just to give it a bit of dimension. You don't, you don't need it to fold it flat because we're trying to get it to flare out like it's a beautiful dress hanging in the closet. So then the next one you're going to do, so fold this back out. The next one you're going to do actually folds back as well. And it's a straight, it's a straight, uh, score line. So you're going to fold it flat like this. The next one goes away from you. So this one goes toward you still. So toward you, but at an angle, toward you, flat, and then away from you is the third. So then you're going to fold this up and away from you. And you're going to do just like that. So then what you want to do is you can fold that back out. You The next one is also the middle one where it like pleats up to make the beautiful collar line. Um, it goes toward you. So just give it a little crease. Doesn't have to be, you know, completely concrete permanent. Then the fourth one or fifth one goes away from you like so. And so you end up with something that looks like this. And the first is back like that. See, see the cute little, right? Okay. And then the next one is the, the last one, which it's straight to the waistband and then flares out. So you want to fold it to the waistband, just giving a little pinch, not trying to crease the heck out of it. And then you're going to follow that score line out with the little flare like so. So now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to fold your uh, sleeves and they fold forward. What I like to do is I like to put my, na my nail on the top of the shoulder at the score line. So when I go to fold this, it helps to give it a nice sharp edge like so. And you're going to fold both of your sleeves forward and then you're going to do the same thing. Your nail at the top of the shoulder and then fold in and it gives you a nice, nice, um, beautiful line there. And so now we could actually put all of our folds together. So the, these forward, this one back, this one goes in together with the next one. So you just pinch at the waistband too. Don't pinch anywhere else. And then this one goes in and then back. And then look, how cute is that? So now what you want to do is you're going to put all of these uh, together. So you're going to go ahead and fold the waistband. So toward you and then away from you. And now on the waistband, I try to just pinch only on the waistband. Um, this one goes back. And then these two simultaneously go in together like that. So I grab it on the waistband and grab it on the waistband here. And then pinch in together like this. And then squeeze just on the waistband and like that. Now that the second, this next section is the same way. So the one, two, three, fourth and fifth. Uh, pinch on the waistband and then go in this way. So pinch in together this way, pushing inward like that to create the collar. And then the last, the last one goes back, uh, whoops, back go, goes back like this and then just pinch on the waistband. And so then now you have like that, right? Okay. So now to put the box pleat in, what you want to do is, um, right. Let's see, let's open it back up. So you, and it, this is just to train the paper too, because you're going to have to open it back up to hot glue at all. Oh, the hot glue gun. You need a hot glue gun. <laughs> or at least I use hot glue. You can use whatever you'd like. If you use a wet glue, you'll have to hold it for much longer. But so you want to, so this is getting your, um, just the basic form. So then you pull it back out and then down here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but from the waistband, it starts to flare out into a box pleat right there. And I don't know if it'll show it, but on the back, I push my nail into the bottom of that box pleat 
and I push and I push in like in towards the middle and that score line will start to automatically pleat on its own. And so then once it gets started with your nail in the back and you're pushing, it'll start to fold. You're not wanting to fold it dramatically all the way to the top of the waistband or all the way to the waistband. You're just wanting to get a little bit of a box pleat in there um, to add form and dimension to the dress. So it's going to look something like that and then like that on the side. So it and it'll just automatically start doing that on its own. So it's going to look like that. So then there's also one on the other side of here. Let's see if we can get the light right, right about there. I don't know if you could see that or not, but you're going to do the same thing. Put, put your nail on that score line and then, and then push in, just gently push in and then go follow that, uh, that score line up and see it automatically starts to, and you're kind of pushing in together with this section towards that box pleat. And then you're going to end up with like that. And you're not the same thing. It's just a gentle little, just a gentle little pleat um, to get form to the dress and add dimension to your uh, beautiful little gowns. Right. And then, and then that's what it looks like. How cute is that? Right. How darling. Okay. And now we can go ahead and start hot gluing it together. And maybe, <laughs> maybe we can. No, it's not ready yet. Hang on. Let me let this heat up and then I'll be right back. All right. Hot glue gun is ready. Okay. So, uh, what I like to do first is I like to do the middle of the dress. And so what I do is I put a little glue in each of these corners. Um, and then I pinch in and wait for the glue to set. So let's do that. So just a tiny bit. You do not need a lot. Just ever so. And just on the waistband. Just on the waistband. A little dollop. That is all. And then squeeze and hold. But actually when I'm holding this. I like to flip it over. Still squeezing. Still squeezing. Um, and I like to do the back. Um, and then pretty soon I just hold it all at once while it's, you know, adhering. So we're going to just in that corner right there, just the smallest dollop of glue only on the waistband and pinch and then pinch and shift, pinch and shift to the other side and then do this one like a so and pinch and then, uh, in those corners. And then what I like to do is. Right there at the bottom of the armpit, I like to put a tiny bit of glue on both sides. Just a little bit. And if you go under the sleeve, when it glues forward, um, you won't see that. You want to make sure you're up under the sleeve when you like wipe the glue gun off. And then if you get a little bit like that, uh, after just a few seconds, um, you can actually like scrape it off um, before it's totally set. And then you won't have that little... See, like that. Uh, you won't have that little glue glob there. Glue glob. <laughs> Just a little. You don't need too much. Not too much. Like that. And then that'll then that'll set up. And as soon as this is done, I'll be right back. Okay. And then, OMG, how cute is that, right? Darling, you get your little pleats there. So cute, right? And now when I go to put the hangers in, um, I like to, I glue two pieces of gold back to back and then I cut them out. So they're gold on, and the back doesn't look as nice, but the thing is, is they're not a bright white. Um, so that makes me feel better. And, um, but you don't have to do that. They also makes it when you glue, when you glue two pieces of gold together and cut them out, it makes them much sturdier. And they kind of have a little bit of a, a plasticky like feel. Uh, the other thing is I have no idea how in folding it like this, how these even go in. I could not get mine to fit in. Uh, they're just too wide for how I did it. So if you copy this, all I do is like right next to the uh, little triangular piece here. Actually, just cut the scallop off. That's that's basically, you could cut them off smaller and then hot glue them on. Uh, but this, when you just cut the little scallops off, it, um, they, they, you like have to curve it a little and then they just, they just slide in and then you don't have to, you don't actually have to hot glue them in. They just go like, just like that. They just fit in like that. And then, how cute. Do -do -do. 
do. I'm gonna get my cute little dress. Do do do. <laughs> Isn't it adorable? That's so cute. And then they hang in the uh, little closet or the little armoire. Uh, here, scooch over. I got a brand new dress, and they just hang on the little. Oh, oh, whoops there. Isn't <laughs> that so cute? Yeah, right? That is darling. So, yeah, so that's that's it. That's all there is to that, uh, to the dressmaking portion of the segment. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so, yeah, so cute. And so there is that. Now, um, let me go through the pieces and let's go ahead and make an armoire. <laughs> Since that's really what this is all about, right? Uh, so let's see. So here's what I've done. I've cut out one giant base piece out of this gorgeous paper here. I have cut out one piece with uh, the coordinating uh, die, uh, laid it on the paper, laid this in the center, and uh, whoops, <laughs> and then cut it all out at the same time. So then I ended up with these two pieces. Uh, I also cut out. Um, I also cut out, uh, cause we're going to just make a traditional armoire. Uh, we're not going to do any of the fancy stuff. <laughs> so I cut out one shelf piece. I cut out two, uh, door panels, uh, one shelf piece, two door panels that I've already taped. I taped the pieces in and I cut a panel. I include a panel, a decorative panel to the back that is, a one and a half by six inches uh, for the back of it. And I held it to the edge of the door, not the tab. Um, so that way it wouldn't impede as the doors were opening. Because you're not going to see that very back there. And it they'll look really nice still. Um, but I wanted, I, I love this. I love having those glued in and not having those. I don't want to see through it. I, I like this much better. The solid doors versus the um, ones with the holes in it. So um, I have two of those. So it's going to go like this. Right? Isn't that gorgeous? I cut them out together. So I did one, flipped it, and on the same portion of pattern, um, cut it out again. So I'm only missing like a microscopic amount right here, but it looks like, right? Isn't that so pretty? Yeah. So that was fun. And then what I've done is I cut out two two of this one in this beautiful lavender uh, matte, this matte lavender, um, it's Anna Griffin matte lavender foil. And then I cut two out in white heavyweight cardstock. So like 300 GSM cardstock or light chipboard um, is in two in white. And I'm going to glue these, uh, one of each of these to the top, like so. We're going to glue these together tape and glue them together and then what I've done is I've cut two of the layering die this long one here and that lavender as well and two for the doors two layering pieces which is here uh, for the doors like so um, I've also cut a two a two across by one and seven eighths inch square that I scored every quarter inch and I'm going to make two gussets so I'm going to cut it here in the middle at one inch so then I'll have two one inch gussets that's going to go just like that so actually uh this is my this is my gusset here so I'm just going to cut this in half so this is at one inch right in half and so this is going to be my gusset like oh that's kind of cheesy like it veered <laughs> so this is what your gusset is going to look like like this so behind the legs you're just going to glue this right behind the legs on the bottom of the armoire to give it strength in the legs and uh stability to to help if you put any kind of weight in the cabinet um you don't need this for the dresses at all like that is the chipboard makes them so sturdy um i would do it if i didn't have the chipboard because this is it's very weak. And if you get to moving it around at all, it's not the weight of what's in the armoire. It's the weight of the armoire as a whole. And then if you're moving it, if you just made it and set it on the table, it would be just fine without moving it. But if you're dinking around with it and everything else, it, the, it wears, the legs are get weak just from the movement on the table and scooting them around. And that it will have a propensity to want to fold under the legs to fold back and uh or in 
And uh, it, it, yeah, it just is not cool. So if you put these, if you only want to cut the metallic and then you put these gussets behind them, like on the bottom, um, it will help with that and they won't, they won't go in and you should just be fine, especially, especially if you're just doing dresses. Um, it will give them so much strength with that gusset. So there's that. So now, okay. And then the other thing I did was I cut out, um, three, one. I cut out one, two, two, okay, I need two hangers, and then I cut out four, or five, six, <laughs> I cut out six little handles in lavender as well, um, this, this hanger here was my mock-up for my locking mechanism, so this, this is what the hanger looks like, like this, so I ended up cutting off the hanging portion, just made a nice rounded edge, um, put a score line at the bottom of the hanger there, right where it's straight. And so this is going to end up, and then what I did was, is I snipped out the center there with a pair of cutter bee scissors that were really tiny. You can't do it with the big scissors, but the cutter bees are small enough to get in there. Um, I just snipped that out and that's to go over the lock the locking portion, but I'm going to do that with you. Um, I also cut two of them. Oh, shoot. Well, that's backwards, but will it still go? Can I hold on? Oh, we don't, we're not, uh, so I'm still going to glue these together. We can actually use them, uh, cause I'm cutting those off. So they'll actually still go back to back. Oh, and then you'll have a really nice, oh, that's cool. Um, so I'm going to glue these back to back. So when that, that latch lifts up, it's pretty on the backside and it will give this a lot of strength. Um, because that's going to be a little bit um, thin there. Um, this will make it really strong. So I'm going to glue those back to back. Um, so that's my mock-up one there. But I've got several of the handles cut out. for Six six of the lavender handles. And for us to be able to ad-lib uh, our latching mechanism. So that'll be fun to make that. So that's what all the pieces I have cut out. I don't think I'm missing anything. So we ought to just jump in and start getting this done. So the other thing I'll say is if I mess up, um, because I get ahead of myself, um, you want to, after you fold this up, put your doors in first. That is a huge deal for getting the doors straight. Um, that's how I got these doors nice and straight, um, and square in the hole. Um, these I had to like, I didn't get the, um, I didn't get the, uh, oh, that's coming off. Um, I was already folding because I already started this tutorial and this was the one I was going to use. Uh, anyhow, <laughs> I started the tutorial and then I ad libbed the box afterwards because I had messed up the tutorial. Anyways, <laughs> I forgot to put the doors in. And so now they're kind of, they look nice, but they're not, they're not as nice as when you glue the doors in first. Um, I'm glad we're redoing the locking thing, but they're a little bit crooked. And that was because I had to like finagle them on the door and try, you know, to get them straight on the door. Whereas when you, we're going to tape our doors together and then lay them in the hole after we fold it all up. Um, it, they just, they come out so much nicer, um, and straighter and even in the hole. So, um, you can do it. It's just, this end result is a much nicer product than trying to do it afterwards that I found that I for me that I found because it was just harder when it was already all a box to get them lined up. OK, so first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to fold all of our score lines. And so I'm going to start with the easy ones. I'm going to flip this over onto the back and I'm going to fold uh, these three here and the two tabs and then we'll do the uh, then we'll do this tab. So I'm going to go ahead and do like so. I just put my nails onto the um, score line and fold to my nails. And it seems like that does a nice job of getting a crease where the score line is. So I feel where the, because you can actually feel that score line in this 300 GSM paper. And then I just fold up, making sure that I'm lined up with each of the score lines uh, that are vertical with it, with the sides fold in and you don't have to crease this because it's going to be a box so you're not wanting it to be like the death crease or anything um so same here fold from there to there 
but put your nails on the score line and fold up to them. And like so, and this should line up with the score line and that should line up with the score line. And then we're going to fold our little tab in. And now this one here is a little trickier because it is such heavyweight paper and thin. Um, so I like to do it with the ruler, with the Tim Holtz ruler. And uh, what you do is you take the sharp edge of the ruler and you put it on uh, you put it you put it on the two corners where the score line would be like that and you take and you fold up to the ruler. you fold up to that edge and you'll get a nice straight score line and then you can then you can proceed like so. And there it is. And you're going to do this same fold, the same folds uh, to this one here. So let me fold this up and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that we have that one done, what we want to do is we're going to connect the two sides and then hopefully we'll put the doors in. So this is where I typically like to, you're going to flip it back over. You're going to, let's see, this is the front. So let's just go ahead and do the two, the two put score tape on the two tabs and um, let's see, I think uh, I'm going to use quarter inch score tape on mine. Uh, I think is a better size. Uh, you can also, uh, whoops, 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 fake earthquake, sorry. Uh, you can also use, uh, uh, you can just use wet glue too if you want. Um, so I'm going to put score tape, I'm, I'm also going to use glue too though, so. Um. For this as well. So I'm just putting score tape on the two tabs. Like so. And now what you want to do is you want to pull. Um, and make sure the. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So then you want to pull. Just pull the back off of one of the tabs. And make sure the score tape is on top of the tabs. And then so you can shimmy. And for permanency. You can uh, put some glue on the top of it. Put some wet glue on the top. And then what you want to do is you want to line up this edge with that score line and this corner and that corner with each of these corners. And you're not going to do it. You're just going to press lightly. You're just going to press lightly. Just press lightly because what you want to do now is you want to fold it in. Uh, I didn't press light enough or hard enough. <laughs> Cause, cause you're gonna want to readjust if it's not enough, and so, and what you're trying to do is see if you're straight. You just want to make sure you're straight. Okay, and then once once it looks like you're good, like you're even at the top and the bottom. Oh, we're just a hair off. Um, once once it looks like you like how it looks, the top and the bottom. Uh, you're gonna go ahead and. You're gonna press your score line. Oh, we're we are a bit off there. Um, but we're straight here. So I think we'll be able to get away with that. I'm gonna I'm gonna proceed. But the ideal ideally you would want um these lines here to meet to be perfectly even with each other. The top and the bottom you would want perfectly even with each other, as well as uh, this line to be perfectly uh, even with this score line here, this this edge here, um, this should meet up. But if they don't, then you can, you know, readjust. But yeah, this one is, I think I can make this work though. I'm going to give it a whirl. I'm, I'm just a hair to the top, but that's okay. That's okay. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fold this in, okay, like this. I'm going to fold this in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we are crooked there. So I'm going to adjust it. Hopefully, it'll be fine. So I'm just, I just pressed down in the, in the direction I wanted to go to get it more even. And I think this is going to work just fine for me to get it square. So I'm peeling that off. I'm going to add some glue to the tab. So I fold it in. Uh, next to oh make sure you don't got glue on your don't get glue on your armoire though um make sure you're 
adhesive is on top of the tab only. So fold it in right next to the armoire on the front, down like this, and then we're just going to fold this tab over on and make sure we're lined up nice and even like so. Like so. Beautiful. And burnish. And wipe excess glue off. Hopefully it doesn't get over everything. <laughs> okay, now this is where you want to put the doors in. This this is where you want to put the doors in. Okay, I don't, I'm looking to see if I have glue. <laughs> I don't want glue to be anywhere it's not supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, yeah, this is, is so this is where you want to put the doors in. So what you want to do is you want to take some temporary adhesive temporary adhesive and you want to line these up perfectly and you want to put um you want to tem put temporary tape on them that looks pretty good to me just tape your doors together and then you want to put some score tape on your tabs like that okay so now what you want to do is peel your score tape off and pop this down yeah, yeah, yeah okay so now I'm actually gonna put glue on mine you don't have to put glue on yours you could just use the score tape but I want it to be able to shimmy because what I like to do is I like to fold, fold, uh, so I got my orientation. So this is the front and this is the top of it. So I'm just going to slide this down in here. And then I'm going to fold this flat lining up. I'm going to start with this side. Lining up where, what I want to see in the hole. And so this score line of this tab, you want to line up. But you want the score line to be to that that side of this edge because that's where the door folds. And if it goes past, the door is not going to want to open properly. So that's that's what you're looking for. Even spacing up the top and the bottom and that score tab to be to the left of the opening. To the left of that edge. So do we like that? No. See, I'm too far up. So let's adjust. It's okay. We can adjust. Oh, we're too far down. It, the camera's in the way, so it's hard to see. Okay. And in right there. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I might need a little more glue, but I'm actually going to burnish this while I got it right there. And then this side should work out pretty good for... Oh, see... But let's see, why is that my, my, oh, it's, why is that not working out for my, my score line is, hmm, that's not going to open. Let's peel the tape. Yeah, that's not going to open. Okay. Oh yeah, see it. Is that where it's supposed to be? Okay, well, occasionally you'll have to do a little adjustment, but for whatever reason, this one decided not to line up in the hole in spite of... Normally when I do this, it works every time. This this score line might be... I might be just that, a tad too far. See, and now they, they go on top of each other, which actually to me is not a bad deal. I'm kind of liking it. So make sure they're open, but see how they're even? So when you put them in first, you can like totally make sure they're even. There, let's go ahead and burnish this one down because I actually like that. Especially when we go to put the lock on, that's going to actually work in our favor. Yeah, that's going to totally work in our favor. How pretty is that? <laughs> oh, that is just gorgeous. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the lock's going to work. The lock's going to work really nice in our favor. 
Okay. Oh, fun. Okay. But normally, normally though, you, they're supposed to meet up. And I think I was over too far on this score line and I had already burnished it, which I shouldn't have done. I should have just kept shimmying. But that's okay. So there you go. A little work around. Just take the tape off and make. But see how, how much easier it is to get those even before folding the box up? So yeah. Yeah, we're just a hair. We're like a 16th over on those doors. That is A-OK -okay to me. That is A-OK. -okay, but look how even they are. That is nice. Okay, so now what we want to do is... Uh, I'm totally happy with that. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, start getting our, um, start, start putting adhesive on our other pieces. So what you want to do is I like to, on the front of the box, I like these to fold under. So you have a nice clean edge there and over like that, these to go in last. So these are going to fold over onto the top of these. Oh, look how pretty. Um, so what you want to do is. You want to put score tape on top of here, but on the back of the, the inside of the tabs. No, hold on, buddy. My puppy wants in. So I'm going to go ahead and put score tape here and here and on these two. So on the back, on, on the top of this one. Like so. And then on these. Oh, wait. That's Elisha from the Patel. <gasps> Sorry. Oh, no. Whoops. Oh, we do not want those. Where do we want that score tape? Because these go in and these go like this. No, we actually want it on the outside. It was a lie. So let's put score tape here. Oh, sorry, guys. Don't listen to me. Some what kind of shenanigans are these for a tutorial? Jeez. It was a lie. Sorry. Because technically, these are actually the inside of the box. <laughs> so here, it was a lie. So the back, you're going to put on these two that connect. Oh, my heavens. Sheesh. And then here, and here. I think this lavender metallic is going to be so pretty with this. And then flip it over and just on these tabs here on the outside. And that is all. Okay, like so. Oh my heavens. Hopefully this turns out nice. <laughs> Okay, so now we have this. Good grief. And so the idea is to... Um, you're going to put... What I like to do is put all these in together at once. So I'm going to start with the bottom. I'm going to peel all the score tape off. And I'm going to fold these up all together. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm only going to put glue on the bottom. I'm not going to put it on the tabs. Um... Like this, I'm just going to put glue on this one that's on the very bottom. And primarily because um, this this will help me shimmy a little. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to fold these tabs. These tabs go in like this. But what you're going to end up doing, and it's a little bit harder with this stiff, um, this stiffer paper than it is just with plain cardstock. But you're going to fold these like in together like this and then pressing this one into the inside of this one like so try not to get glue everywhere like that you're just like pushing them in together so they want to like ah i don't want to get glue on my beautiful design <laughs> that paper is so gorgeous okay so so pushing in together and then lining up the edge like so Lining up all the edges like that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to set it on the table. You're going to open your doors and you're going to go ahead and burnish that down. 
and then press the sides in as well. Press the side flaps down, these down. And holding it on the table should help get you square. Um, and if if it's a little bit cattywampus, once we do the other side, it'll be just fine. I was just burnishing that down. I'm trying not to get glue everywhere. <laughs> there. Okay, there we go. Yeah, see, it's a little bit askew, but we'll fix that with um we'll fix that with the uh the top once we get the top the top all set in it and then it will go square so let's see let's peel off all these and put glue on that other tab uh, like so it's kind of an awkward way to do it but it for me it works i i just think it it, it just works so much easier for me That was too much glue. Shoot. I'm going to wipe just a bit of this on the corner off. There. And that's just so that way I'm not getting all schmutzy. Okay, so push these two flaps in. And then at the same time, you're folding this one in like that. And it's just all of a sudden the tension gives and they just kind of collapse together. And, um, okay, now line this up, pushing, push the corners in like so, keeping it square on the table, and then line these, line these up together here, and then line these up like that. And then look, it's square. And now you flip it over and you burnish the bottom and then turn it on each side. You could even do your little, but be careful of the lip right here. Burnish, burnish, burnish. And then uh, same with the two flaps. Push those down. Push the two flaps down. Isn't this gorgeous? The paper is so pretty. Right? How beautiful. Isn't that great? Yeah, that is gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So pretty. Okay, so now what we're going to do is... We're going to glue our chipboards together and uh, our chip, our, our front to our chipboard. Um, and let's see. Uh, actually, yeah. So the next step is to adhere these guys together. Uh, this one is the front and I've got one that's the back and it's kind of janky. Um, when I cut it out, it like didn't emboss it all the way because I had it on the edge. But that's okay, it'll be on the back, and that'll be alright to me. And then I don't have to waste it. Okay, so what we want to do here is, generally, I don't like to put glue on a uh, foil. And uh, I don't like to put glue on foil because you see all the lines. But um, I think for permanency, because this is, we're trying for stability, like the most stable, I'm going to put glue on it anyways. Uh, even though I don't like it, I'm still gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put it on, and that's so that it all it'll all be nice and sturdy and stout. And so I've got a little score tape to hold it together, but then after I'm done peeling all these off, I'm gonna go ahead and put glue on it too. So I'll show you what I do with this one, and then I'll do the other one off camera. So just a little glue, because you want all the pieces to go together. But you don't want... And then I put glue on the tape too, so it shimmies. And then on the feet, don't forget the feet. The feet are a big deal. Because that's why we're doing this, is to stabilize the feet. And so, where's the... Right here. So you're just going to line this up and stack it. That's it. Just line it up as best you can. Making sure everybody is really happy. And it's just for fun. So if it's not perfect, do not stress about it. You can embellish it. You can do all kinds of stuff and it's okay. And if you get a practice one and it's okay, put it on the back. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Putting it on the back. It's okay. And see, that's okay. It's like I'm just a tad off. But that's all right. It was the practice one. And it'll go on the back. It's okay. 
If you want it to be super perfect, you can redo it and try again. <laughs> but there you go. And that's what that's like, right? Is that so pretty? That's still so pretty, right? Okay, so let me put this one together. I'll be right back. Okay, there it is. Yeah, see, without you guys staring at me, I did just good. <laughs> did just good. I did just fine. <laughs> yeah, isn't that great? Yeah, that came out pretty good. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, honestly, the trick was more glue. I didn't have enough glue to shimmy this one. So it got like, ugh, it stuck. <laughs> so yeah, now we get to put these on the on the box. Uh, so what, what I do is I line this this bottom edge up with the bottom edge of this. And then this, this sides up with the sides. And then the top just ends up wherever it's at. So uh, basically, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to pop tape and glue on this just above the feet there at the bottom and then down the sides and then below the um, right next to the opening on the top there uh, because the, the top part of this die doesn't actually attach. So right there at the top, the top of this opening is where I'm going to put score tape and glue and no more. Just, just right to there and leave everything else open because that's above the box. So then peel this off like a so. And then wait just there so you can shimmy. Not on the feet. Not on, The feet don't attach. Don't put it on the feet. Like that. And now, and then try to line it up at the bottom first and on the two edges. So I'm just holding it like this and going to line it up, hopefully, nicely. <laughs> yeah. Oh, see, look how pretty. Pretty, pretty. Oh, that is beautiful. Isn't that so pretty? And then press it, just gently press it, firmly but gently. We don't have to use all our muscles. It's just paper. Sometimes, uh, yeah, Hercules comes out and then, oof, uh, you have to start over. <laughs> so now I'm going to do the same thing with the back one. And uh, I'm going to apply this to the back. And I will be right back. Okay, there we go. We got the both attached. And so uh, I just added um, the first little gusset there. Uh, so the feet, you know, stay stabilized. And you could throw a little glue or hot glue there on the on the edges uh, if you wanted to, to actually attach the feet to the gussets. Um, I don't, I didn't, I didn't think it was actually necessary. But if I find that they're bending outward instead of in like they normally do, um, I'll go ahead and add the hot glue. But I take my little gusset. Um, so this is one by one and seven eighths, and then um, scored on the one inside every quarter inch. So I do a, a valley, a mountain, and a valley fold like this to get a little W. And then what I do is I put score tape in the very center and some glue uh, like this. And you're just going to glue the center together like this. Uh, let's see. Pull the... Uh, actually, you need you actually need score tape on, on the two outside tabs and then just on one tab in the middle. So like... Like this. It's easier to do it this way versus um, before you glue them together. Before you glue it together in the center. It's actually easier to do it like this. And so then you're just going to run a bead of glue. Then you're going to fold it in half. And then burnish this together so it sticks. Like this. And you do want to burnish the bejesus out of this one. <laughs> crease it till it won't crease anymore. Uh, like so and just keep holding it till it adheres um, nicely together like so and then once you feel like it's uh, adhered together nicely uh, go ahead and open up the two little flaps so you end up with a gusset like that and then you're going to peel the oh, actually you want to test fit it you want to make sure that it's not too long because sometimes they just end up a little bit long so this one's a little long and then uh, I just cut a micro smidgen off. And what it is, is you want it to fit in between without pushing the legs out. Just fit nice and snug down in. So just like I just snipped off like the tiniest amount off the end to, to get it to fit. So now what I'm going to do is peel the backers off of 
these little tabs, put some glue on, and then go ahead and set it. And the goal is to make this B.O. is already coming apart. Oh, Jiminy Christmas. I didn't let it adhere long enough. Um, the goal is to have that this gusset be behind the legs so when you're looking at it onward, you don't see it. Uh, you see it a little on the side, uh, depending on your angle. Um, but it's not that big of a deal. It, it honestly isn't a big deal. So, like that, like you don't really see it. You don't, oh, it's a, it's a little... One side must be up uh, than the other. <laughs> I thought it was even, though. Yeah, huh, something got shifted. But it's still, it's so cute. Okay, so they're not perfect, guys. But there we go. Now we know it's not going to fall down, at least. Uh, there, there it is there, right? Okay, so there's the gussets. And now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and adhere all my decorative uh, pieces on. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these uh, to the side. I'm just going to put glue on them. And then glue these onto the front. But these you have to make sure that they're going in the right orientation. Because if you don't, uh, one side won't fit. And like the other side will. Like it's it's off just a tad. Like it doesn't fit. Like this side doesn't fit. So you have to flip it around and put them on like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue these all down. And I'll be right back. Okay, look how pretty. Isn't that just pretty? That is nice. Got the uh, sides on and everything. So it looks like that sitting on the table. And so now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and put our closet rod in and our, our shelf. Uh, so the shelf has uh, four score lines and four tabs. Um, so you're just going to fold, gently fold in on all the score lines. And you can do the ruler trick on this if you want to, especially with these long ones. Um, and I just put it right here. Um, right, right from the corner to the corner there. And then just fold up. Just fold up to the the ruler. And because it's so small, it might try to um, move the ruler. But if you just hold steady, it will be, it'll be fine. Okay, so then that's, you're going to get like this. So then this one. And then these just, these uh, little tabs just go like that. Just like that. And so these are going to fold over like that. And it's going to create a little shelf. So, like so. And this little tab goes like this. And then we're just going to fold this one. On that little score line. The long ones I do have to use a ruler. So, like that and that. And so now let's see if we can get this. This one done up here. This long one. There we go. There we go. And you don't you don't you're not trying to like fold it all the way down, just up at a 90 degree angle to give you a nice uh lip for the shelf is all so then all you're gonna do is um i don't i don't try to be perfect by any means on the tab for the tabs and what i do is i just put a little piece of score tape um on each of the corners of the short tabs and um i, I don't worry about if it's not the proper width of the tab i just put a little chunk and the reason is is because this is on the inside and you don't even see it uh, after you put the shelf on that tab is so small that um yeah it's it's hard to get just score tape on the tab so then i just do like oh well i should have put score tape all the way around though actually you want to pick whatever is going to be your front uh, side and you want to put score tape on the top then as well of the shelf on three sides. Uh, so when you go to put it in, you have something to adhere. Um, so I'm going to pick this as my front. And I'm also going to add score tape to all of these uh, sides as well. And then um, I just... This this one, this shelf is a little bit tricky. 
Um, and I just honestly eyeball it. There's, there's no, I don't, I don't try to, so then fold these all down. And the one without the tape is, so peel off the inside ones and then adhere your tabs, fold your tabs in and then fold this to where it's these, these two edges line up that the corner edges line up and then just pinch the tab like so line up the edges like that pinch it try to get your try to get the front of the shelf to be square or the back of the shelf as well so then fold the little tabs in and then fold the end up and then try to line up these those two that corner together where it looks square like that and pinch and the same with this one so my score tape goes uh, over the edge so I'm just gonna peel it back a bit not worry about it okay yeah so now you want to just now what you want to do is you want to retrofit first to get an eyeball of where this is actually gonna sit inside your cabinet and it's it is tricky I will be completely transparent with that regard but I just try to I try to put the shelf about so this is actually hitting the tabs but I actually put the shelf up on top of the the tabs and I try to make it to where um I I don't I'm about an inch down an inch down and that is so that way when I go to put the closet rod in because I'm using a um I'm using a bamboo skewer um, if I put it on the tab and a double portion of the cardstock, it won't protrude out and make a bulge on the outside of the cardstock as as easily. So I try to go to where this shelf is about, I'd say that's about an inch, an inch from this edge, roughly, ish, kind of. <laughs> okay, it's three quarters of an inch, roughly. Um, to the bottom edge is an inch. Yeah, from this edge to the bottom of that lip is about an inch, roughly. And so that's, I kind of have an eyeball. So when I'm looking back there, I go, okay, I have that purple flower, those two rosebuds, and then a little rose. That's kind of where it's going to line up there. So now what I want to do is go ahead and take the tape off. I am just going to keep finagling this, pulling it like towards the front of the box. So trying not to get the tape to adhere and holding it towards the front as I'm scooting it up in the box because it, it is a it is a little bit of a, a finagle so pulling it pulling it to the front of the box yeah and then pushing up with my fingers because it's sticking <laughs> and lining up with my eyeballed line uh, ish That looks about good. Yeah, there's not really any graceful way to get this in here straight. <laughs> Other than to kind of... Uh, that looks... That looks pretty good. Pretty straight to me. Uh, I think I'm going to go with that. And now, uh, if it looks good to me, there... There. Oh yeah, that's about decent. That's decent. We'll take it. Um, so if I get it where I like it, I'm just gonna go ahead and now press those tabs down, and then press them down on the sides as well. Go ahead and and secure those, and uh, press them press them down. And then that's yeah, right? Isn't that great? That is pretty darn fun. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my bamboo skewer. This is all I use. They're just barbecue 10 inch bamboo skewers that we're going to cut a little bit off. And what I like to do is I use, I like to use wire snips, but, uh, wire snips, but you can use, um, you can use scissors as well. You just score it and then break it. So I'm going to put it on the edge, the very edge of the box like that. And then I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut right next to the box edge. And that should get me my perfect length. And like I said, I'm going to try to finagle this up onto the double, 
edged onto the tab. Onto the tab. But if it feels like it's like pressing out and too tight, like it's bulging out there, I'm going to cut just a little bit off. And the reason it is that way is because you have the thickness of these and the tab that you're trying to finagle around. So I'm just going to just ever so slightly cut a tiny bit off. And I'm going to keep cutting microscopic amounts off until I get to where, yes, yeah, I need a little bit more. Until I get to the spot where I feel like that is going to be great. Like it's going to fit awesome. And it doesn't take much. You would be surprised. So on onto that one and then try to finagle it. Pressing, because you still need tension. There we go. And now I'm on the bottom. I'm on the bottom of the tab. Yeah, see, I'm on the bottom of the tab there. And I'm, oh, no, I'm too far up there. So at the bottom edge of the tab. So basically going to eyeball to where it looks even. And now what I'm going to do, uh, since I like the placement of that, I can now go ahead and get my glue bottle in there and go ahead and glue it in. And the cool thing is, is you don't necessarily notice it depending on where you put that, that rod at. But uh, I'm going to put art glitter glue on the rod. I'm just going to squeeze it around right next to it and on both sides around yeah right right next to the paper and that it's going to dry clear so you're not even going to hear or hear it you're not even going to see it but if it starts to look like it's going to drip I do I do grab that off but that's I don't know if you can see it uh, can you see it but that's what it looks like but that that is going to actually dry clear see and on that side there ish it's going to dry clear, so don't worry about that. So now I'm going to let that set up. You don't necessarily have to. Um, I like it to run back rather than down. Uh, so back this way behind the rod versus forward, and you can really see it. If you're really, like, scrutinizing it, um, you won't be able to... It won't be as a, apparent that it's there. Um, so just for just a second, though, because this stuff's actually quick drying. So just for a minute, and... Um, We'll go ahead and and then we can see what the um, dresses look like as well. Oh, I got glue. Shoot. <laughs> yeah, getting schmutz everywhere. <laughs> okay, so yeah, let's let this sit here. And then we're going to go ahead and put our little lock together. So now you would just put your little handles on here. Uh, now you would just put your little handles on here if you wanted to just do the, the basics of the armoire and you would be good to go hang your little dresses up and you're golden um okay i can't help myself let's see what it looks like <laughs> isn't that great so cute isn't it looks like a little wardrobe that is darling okay so we'll let that we'll let that set up because the tension of the rod actually will hold these up. Because I think one of those, one of these isn't even glued in. Because I wasn't sure I was going to keep it as a wardrobe. But anyhow, <laughs> it's fun. So now what you would do is, now to put these handles on, I like it when these handles, um, using what's in the kit, or, or the die set, I like these handles with a little bit of... Um, this is Stampin' Up! Dimensional, Strip Dimensionals. This fits perfectly behind the handles. And so I put a little bit of this behind the handle. And then I would just, I would just go ahead and glue it on. Um, like that. One on, one on each side. And that would be super fun with the dimensionals. But I'm going to make a lock. A locking mechanism. And so what I want to do now is I want to fold one of these pieces in half. One of the handles in half. I'm going to... Try to line it up. Yeah, there we go. Try to line it up. And now what I want to do is I want to fold the little knobby piece out like this. These are going to be where this glues down. And so this is going to be what the, the, the catch mechanism is. So I'm going to glue just the catch portion together. Just a tiny bit of glue. Not too much. Uh, okay, like that. And now I'm going to take the second one here and I'm going to glue this piece to this right to the center of that. A 
Wait for it. Wait, wait. Oh, oh, oh. It's magic. All right. Gluing it down. Trying to just line it up right in the middle. And then pressing. Uh, like a so. And now, on the back of that, we're going to put our strip dimensional. And we only need a tiny bit. You only need a little chunk of it. You don't need a lot. And we're going to pop this back here like that. And this, this side is good to go now. And all we have to do is adhere it. But we, I don't want to do that until I get the other part done. So now what I want to do is I want to grab a few more of these little pieces here. I want to grab my two uh, lavender hangers and I want to glue these together. I'm going to glue these together. And now we know they don't match uh, because we lined them up already. <laughs> um, the hanger part doesn't, but the actual uh, hanger does the base of the hanger actually matches so we're gonna adhere these together like so to give them strength is why we're doing this we want it to be nice and strong um so that way as we're using it it doesn't you know wear out and rip after we get everything nice and happy okay so what i want to do now is i want to go ahead and go i want to trim this off and i'm going to go around like that. That makes for a nice little catch mechanism. And now what I want to do is I want to trim out the middle section of the hanger there. And you have to do it with the tiny scissors. You got to you have to use tiny scissors. So first of all, I'm going to trim it right down the center like that. And then I'm going to trim off just a little tiny portion of each side to allow a space for the catch mechanism uh, like that and let's just test it and see what happens with that let's see do we like it oh look see isn't that great that's gonna be really cool okay and now what I want to do with this is I want to go ahead and I want to fold on the this straight part right at the top edge of the straight part And that's so that way we kind of get a little hingy mechanism going here. Uh, I'm actually going to fold it uh, on the edge of this sharp ruler here um, to get a nice crisp crease there. A nice edge there. Like a so. Like a that. Okay. Uh, go back and forth a little bit to kind of loosen up the fibers of this paper without tearing it is the goal. You're trying to just loosen it up so it wants to swing back and forth um, and not be problematic, really, as you're using it on the armoire. It, it to not be too stiff. Like so. And then just work it a little to where it feels like you're going to get nice movement in it. Now what I want to do is I want to glue one of these on top and I want to glue one uh, on no actually I'm just going to glue one on the top I'm going to glue one on the top and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue or I'm going to put a piece of foam a dimensional on the bottom of it so that way we're the same height as the other but I'm going to line this up to where it's it's in the center. It's in the center of this piece, hopefully. I'm just bending this up to make sure that it's not on the fold. And it's not going to impede it opening. So as soon as I get that to where it looks like it's going to work properly. I'm going to let this just sit here and dry. <laughs> get nice and adhered to that. Okay, and now what I want to do is I want to add foam dimensional to that, a piece there, oh, right there. I'm going to add foam to this one to go on the top and then foam 
dimensional uh, for the bottom as well. See, it fits just on there. Like that. Isn't that great? It just fits. And now let's line this up with the top of this. And it'll give you a little handle. Wait, wait, wait. And make it nice because we did get a little bit of glue schmutziness on the other one. See, isn't that great? So when it's closed, you have a little handle. <laughs> isn't that cute? Okay, we still have to have uh, a dimensional there uh, for the back one. So we're going to go like so. But the thing about this one is I want to glue this one. I want to put glue on this one because it's going to get a lot of... It's going to be worked quite a bit. So I'm going to put just just put a little glue all the way around the edge of it. Uh, like so. Um, and that's just so that way. And then we're going to let that dry. So this piece is good to go for just a little bit. And it actually goes like this. And so what we're going to want to do. So this is our locking mechanism. Let's let's let this sit up for just a second. Yeah, let's let's let this isn't that gonna be so cute? That worked out pretty cute with the hanger. Um, let's let that set up for just a second and I'll be right back as soon as it's dry. Hold on. Okay, so I peeled the backer off of the um the latch, the catch mechanism, and I just took the backer off. And now I'm gonna attach these together. Trying to straighten it out. It's it's not as dry as I would like it to be, but um I don't want my camera to turn off. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a tiny bit of glue uh, to the back of this piece here. I still want it to be able to stick. And I'm holding it on the catch there. And this, this is not, this still has the backer on, okay? So what I'm going to do is lay this on its back. And I'm going to figure out what, what side I want to go forward. So I'm going to open the the right's going to open before this one because mine overlap. Um, Hopefully yours don't, but if they do. And then I'm going to line up the center of this with the center of this. And right, right in the, hopefully right in the middle. Hopefully it'll all work out really good together. Okay, that looks great. So now I'm going to just gently... Remove this, and then go ahead and press this down. Press and press. Like, isn't that looking cute? Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and... Yeah, this this needs to set up more. It's, it's not dry all the way. Shoot. Yeah. There. I was trying to ad-lib. See if we could just get it to work for a second okay okay here we go straighten the lockout straighten the lockout and then close the doors together put the latch on but you and then line this up to where it it looks nice and straight and it's straight Okay, and once you get it where it looks like it's going to go for you, press down. Hold on. Oh, come on. Oh, we're right on the edge. That's why it's not working. So you're going to have to be aware of this rib, that detailed rib there. And uh, I actually have to go next to it or it's not going to, It'll it'll just be like on a lip precariously on a lip and I think I still have oh hold on you gotta go the same spot as where the other is um so you'll, you'll have to finagle yours if you end up doing yours this way as well um make sure you're like not on a lip 
Oh, it, it, uh, yeah, you gotta let it set up. Yeah, you're trying not to be, see that lip? You're trying to be this, that side of it. Well, at least where this one lands for me. Wait, 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 wait. It's not happy. Okay, so I'm just going to put this on here. I'm just going to glue it on the other side. And just allow it to adhere and not even worry about it for now. And just let it set up because you, you have to... You have to give it a chance to, to, to glue to dry. Otherwise, it's it's just not it's not going to work properly. So line it up and then just let it stay. There you go. And so that's that's basically what it's going to look like. And then you'll be able to once once this adheres. Yeah, because that's it's just not it's not adhering because I moved around so much and there's so much glue on the um. There's so much glue on that, um, the sticky part. It it doesn't want to. Yeah, it doesn't. And it's metallic, so the metallic. This metallic is slick, so now you're like trying to work with that as well. Yeah. Yeah, but that's okay. It'll dry. So I can't really show you how that works right now, but. Oh yeah, bugger. It is just not happy. I really want to show you what this looks like. So let me get this cleaned off. Let me get this taken off and get a new strip put on. Um, and then, yeah, it's because I put too much glue. It wouldn't be too much glue if it wasn't, if I wasn't using it. But I'm trying to show you what it looks like. So for it to adhere, you have to... Um, you can't use that much glue. <laughs> it's just not going to dry. So I'm going to put a little bit more on like this. I'm not even going to worry about trying to make it permanent right now. And I'll make it permanent after the video. So that way you guys can at least see it. Okay. Hopefully that is straight. And now press. Is that that looks pretty good. Okay, now let's see what this looks like. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it just there's just too much glue. So it didn't want to work properly, but this, if you don't put the glue on it, this will actually just eventually pop off um, because that's what happened to this one. But because I went back and I glued it, it's actually really good now, but I let it set up to where it dried clear and now it works just fine. Um, and that's the problem with this one. It's, it's your slick surface on slick surface. So it takes a while, even for art glitter glue to dry. Oh, and I got schmutz there. Um, that's okay. That's okay. Um. But anyhow, but that's but that's what why it this isn't wanting to work properly. But it still is super cute, and um, this is a way to make a lock if you wanted to ad lib it that way, or go onto Amazon and buy the fun little jewelry box latches and hot glue them on because that's all I did with this one. I just literally hot glued that on, and then also to the feet to get the feet to stick, I put hot glue down, put the the foot on. And then there's a little hole where a nail actually goes through on the bottom of a jewelry box. And I went, I put hot glue over that and then onto the paper. So that way there was a, a place for this to actually be secure. Because if you just hot glue this, put hot glue on this and then put it on, these don't like to stay on. What happens is the metal is too cold. And for the amount that of glue that you put on, um, and it wants to... It cools off and then it doesn't want to stick. They just, they barely glue on and then they pop off. Um, if you used a uh, type on quick and thick, you'd be good with that. If you turned it upside down and put the feet on first with art glitter glue, it would probably even, that would probably even work. Um, but for me, for the quickness, I did hot glue. So I put some on the foot, adhered it, and then on the back, on the hole, and then over the top of the edge, I just put a dollop of glue on it. And now they 
they're really nice and stout and sturdy. So that's how I got those to stick. And so, yeah, there is that. So, but anyways, there it is. Um, total ad lib for this. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you got some, uh, tips and tricks or pointers on how to put it together and, uh, and you would just enjoyed it. <laughs> um, oh, here, uh, we never put the, uh, wardrobe in. <laughs> we gotta, um, our girl needs her dresses, right? Let's see. Here we go. Let's go ahead and pop these in. Now I didn't glue any of the hangers in or anything. They're just in the dresses. And look, right? Isn't that totally adorable? Like, how cute is that? That is nice. And then you have a beautiful little armoire. There it is. Let me know what you guys think of this project down in the comments below. Let me know which one is your favorite. and uh, Or what way you like uh, the putting it together. Whether with the chipboard or doing the jewelry box feet. Um, the actual jewelry box embellishments on it. Um, anyways, thanks so much for hanging out. Um, hope you guys have a great week. And until next time, happy crafting, everyone. Bye-bye.